Hello, uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Sam Lee. I'm the founder and CEO of Con Street Partners. Um, today I'm very glad to be here and a great honor to uh, moderate this um, panel. Um, so uh, just a quick introduction. Uh, what we do at uh, Con Street Partners is the investment bank in the crypto world. So we uh, incubate project and also have our crypto funds to invest in uh, uh, ICO project as well. Um, so today our topic is the uh, future of investment. Um, I'm very glad that uh, we have uh, some of the best professional in the field joining the panel today. Um, so I'm going to pass to them to give a quick introduction of, of themselves uh, and then uh, we start the discussion. So please. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Shin He Lee, a partner at a fund called GBIC, or some people call GBIC. Uh, we are based in US, New York, uh, China, uh, Shanghai, and also I'm in charge of the investing uh, in San Francisco and Korea. But because Korea is such an important market for us, <laughs> uh, we are, I'm spending a lot of time in Korea as well. Uh, and our fund has um, grown um, quickly um, like because we do not only invest in projects, uh, but we really care about the acceleration of the project. So we do a lot of marketing and then community management, PR, uh, influencer relationships and also the connection with the exchanges uh, and that's how uh, we have been growing and because we have the global footprint uh, networks not only in Korea like China and US uh, we are able to help the project from basically every in the world so for example if a project coming from Korea we will be able to help in the US and China markets and vice versa Great. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Miles Pashini, and I'm the founder of B21. B21 is a personal wealth management platform that we're building for the mass market. Um, I've been involved in the crypto markets for about four years now. Um, prior inventor of the crypto-linked debit cards, which uh, was a hugely successful project where we issued a million cards in over 70 countries. And uh, now I've moved on to building a, an investment platform for um, crypto assets. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Alex Shin. Uh, I'm the chief business officer and partner at Hashed. Hashed is the largest crypto assets fund, um, educator, community builder, and accelerator based out in Korea. Uh, we have six partners. I'm one of the partners based out in San Francisco. Hi, uh, my name is John Nam, and I'm with uh, Strong Ventures, which is uh, one of the top seed funds, VC funds here in Korea, and also supporting uh, Korean-American entrepreneurs in the U.S. Uh, our involvement in cryptocurrency started in 2013 when very fortunately uh, we, we invested, were the first investors in the first Bitcoin exchange here called Corbett. Um, uh, later found out that we were the first VC to ever invest in, in crypto back then and uh, so it's, it's been a great journey. Uh, last year, uh, as some of you may know, Corbett was acquired by Nexon's holding company, NXC, in what people say is the largest uh, uh, exit in the crypto space uh, last year. And uh, recently, we just uh, started a new f fund called Strong Genesis that's focused on, on cryptocurrency investments. And we're doing this in, in JV partnership with DNA. DNA is one of the sponsors of this conference, and uh, uh, we are uh, one of the top, I, I argue it's the top advisory firm and uh, investment banking firm for, for crypto projects. Uh, we backed uh, and supported uh, early projects like EOS, Hashgraph, and uh, Ethereum to some degree as well. So uh, we are really glad to be here and uh, glad to be part of this panel. Hello everyone, my name is Jamie Rockover and I work for investing.com. Investing.com is one of the biggest financial portals in the world. Uh, we have 16 and a half million unique visitors coming to our portal every month. Um, we publish in 25 languages in 30 different geo-specific editions. And uh, we focus on global markets, but we actually have a tremendously popular cryptocurrency sector as well as a standalone cryptocurrency app. 
and provide information, data, and tools to crypto traders and investors. Thank you. Okay, hello. Uh, I'm Song Jin Huang, the CEO and co-founder of uh, Foundation X, uh, the crypto accelerator in South Korea. So the company is the uh, subsidiary of the Future Play, uh, one of the well-known accelerator in South Korea, I believe, uh, which I co-founded and uh, which uh, have invested and incubated over 75 different types of the techie startups so far, including IoT, wearable, VR, AR, um, artificial intelligence, unmanned car, and that kind of so many things. And then uh, we uh, fall in love with the blockchain technology. So we found another company, the Foundation X, it's a subsidiary, and I became a CEO of that. And we uh, tried to incubate it and invest it uh, the blockchain technology and blockchain startups in South Korea. And uh, I personally uh, uh, see your entrepreneur, so I co-founded lots of IT companies and lots of was acquired by the Samsung Electronics. Uh, that's the first time for them to acquire the Korean startups. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. So um, today the topic is future of investment. So actually it should be future of crypto investment so i think most specific to to get all the experience from the uh, panelists so let me just get a uh, understanding of the audience how many have invested in crypto before that's a good amount right so so today the topic should be very interesting to you because of the recent fluctuation of the market where we are going so hopefully we can uh, get some insights uh, from this panel. Um, so my first question to the panel is, because there's all the professional here have a vast experience in this investing in different projects. So what will be your first free criteria when you are selecting investing in, in a crypto project? Yeah. I I can go first. Um, I think the ICO uh, investing is very similar to angel investing um, because if you look at the angel investing, uh, probably the founder or like the co-founder, the team uh, have uh, their visions, not necessarily have their um, product ready, um, but angel investors um, believe in their vision and the team. Uh, and invest uh, in like do the uh, angel round. So I think like ICO or um, ICO investment or blockchain investment is very similar uh, in a sense that it's very early on. So you have to uh, really understand the team. So the team, whether they have really technical um, uh, foundation and they have uh, resilience and I think it's really important, resilience to really overcome all the um, challenges uh, and then problems uh, that uh, they will encounter along their journey because uh, mass adoption of new technology, including blockchain, is not that easy. So I think the team, the resi resilience, and, the, and then also like their ethics is important. And I think another really important criteria for us is whether the blockchain technology is really important for the project. So we haven't seen like many projects say like we are raising $30 million, uh, but my first question, especially a reverse ICO, uh, but in many cases, to be honest, I don't understand why they need blockchain or why even they need the decentralized system. And because I will not say decentralizing everything is always the answer. So I think the team, their technology, their understand technology, uh, and then like why blockchain is important for the project and what kind of problem they're, they're trying to solve with the new blockchain technology are really important criteria for us. Uh, Feel free. Yeah, I can, uh, I can just add that I, I find that the uh, investors on our platform when evaluating uh, which crypto assets to invest in are really looking at three criteria. Uh, one is, um, Utility, you know, what are the use cases of the particular currency? Uh, you know, other things involving in that would be developer community, uh, support from a particular industry. Uh, then the other one would be scarcity, how many of the actual coins exist and what they believe the value would fluctuate to based on the demand for that existing supply. And thirdly, the perceived value. 
uh, which is basically what people believe it will do. And that can vary based on the particular investor and their experience in the space that that crypto is operating in. I just want to add a quick comment here. So this is actually a really hard question. Everywhere we go, they're like, what do you look for in the best ICO investments? And it's changing, I, I would say, weekly. I think everybody here realizes that. Uh, just to remain a bit more relevant to the audience, um, retail for the, the buying market for ICOs for retail markets has changed considerably. What used to be an ICO that went to everybody is now going to seed rounds, private rounds, private, private rounds, family rounds, all that good stuff, right? It doesn't mean there's not an opportunity for you guys out there. Um, so what I would look... What I would suggest, what we look for the most, is good founders with previous exit experience. Um, the, the level of talent that's entering the blockchain space has grown immensely. The days of the two guys in a white paper is over by beyond and far. Uh, the partners that are entering the space now are previous partners from Andreessen Horowitz, a bunch of Y Combinator guys, and people who have multi-million dollar, hundreds of million dollar exits now. So these are the projects you can get into if you're following what they're doing, uh, even on the retail market and still perform exceptionally well. Uh, so I uh, totally agree with the um, the Chinese uh, uh, point. Uh, I mean the uh, mention. So uh, uh, I mean uh, the why blockchain question is most important. I think that's the basic question, and I believe that the uh, the blockchain can be categorized into the three layers. The first layer is uh, the um, the technology. So it's about uh, the algorithm layer, so uh, like such as you know, um, um, Tangle algorithms or Ethereum, uh, those kind of things. So uh, we uh, check it out the how algorithms are deeply uh, think think about you know uh, for a long time uh, from the perspective of the um, uh, the engineers. And the second layer is the governance. Governance. Uh, it's about the community. So how to make the token economy. Is uh, is uh, continuously working or not? Uh, that's the uh, main factor we're gonna uh, ask, ask to the startups which are preparing for the ICO. And the last layer uh, we thought uh, and we gonna ask to the startups is the uh, business layer. I think uh, the blockchain uh, technology and blockchain startups can be make their business. Uh, not only uh, onto the um, the digital area, but also the outside of the digital area. So uh, we try to find out the uh, vivid way or tangible way uh, to interact with the physical area and the digital area. Yeah, I think uh, really the question I asked first is: there really a problem that's being solved? You see a lot of solutions where there's no problem existing being put out in the market, and so. For me, as being a product developer all of my career, I ask myself, is there really a problem that's being solved? Is that solution significantly better than what exists in the market today? And is there a demand? Um, you might have a better solution, but there's no demand for the solution. So once you get to that point, um, for me, it comes down to, is there a team that can execute it? Um, and if you can solve those two things, seriously solving a problem that there's a demand for and you have a team that can execute, you've probably got a good start. I think everybody. Already okay, said. that's good. Yeah, yeah. That's, thank you. That's very good insights there. Okay, so I'm gonna go a little bit technical, right? So even okay, following all the guidelines to select a good project, right? But I think um, many of the audience might probably experience a lot of the ICO. I want to focus on ICO because I think more of the individual <coughs> investment they 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 are more um, easily invest in ICO rather than than a fund or anything. So a typical, if you look at the, the past six months, a lot of the even good projects, right, they will go up and like this, right, even very good projects. So technically, now some of the investors saying, oh, maybe instead of participating in the ICO, maybe we should invest one month later after they listed, after some of the people exit and then they just buy there. So what will be your view to that statement? Anyone, feel free. Okay, so another hard question. Um, there's, there's a lot of factors why a project would do that, uh, and it has in part to do economics and game theory. Uh, when you're at the earliest stage investments, like you guys all know, um, the, the projects now have lockup periods, and they're really strategically positioned 
uh, because if, especially if they're a tier one and they can get onto a major exchange and have distribution, they understand what percentage of their network is going to be in circulation. And based on that, they can hire market makers, liquidity provisioners, or price protection, or whatever you, you deem it, to kind of fluctuate that as well. So there's a lot of a perceived risk in that regard. It's not something even we understand to the fullest. We don't know who's behind it. It could be the exchanges, other funds, et cetera. Um, my, my genuine advice is, if the founding ideas and the projects and the project is sound and their foundational technology is great, in the long run, they're going to perform well, right? And I think that's the best way to look at it. Yeah, I really agree with Alex's point that like, I cannot give like specific advice when to get in from the secondary market. Uh, but if you look at the typical startups, they usually takes five to seven years. Uh, they either get acquired or even like do IPOs. And to do that, along this five to seven even longer journey, they have to prove so many things, including like number of users, like the revenue, business like scheme and everything. But because with the new scheme of ICO uh, came in, actually that uh, from the start of the project until the liquidation point, it has been much shortened. It can be three months, six months, which is really like really short uh, compared to like traditional like startup period. So it's a very hard for a project to deliver something significant uh, within the six months. Like how can you develop something really disruptive uh, in six months, right? So uh, I really going back to like Alex's point, it is really you have to believe in the fundamentals uh, and then yeah, like maybe it drops, but if you really believe in the team and then the problem that the project is solving, uh, we believe eventually uh, it's gonna go up. But I think it also, like many uh, aspects, like the market trend and also it's a certain period of the liquidity event uh, compared to other startups. Uh, sorry, do you want to go ahead? Yeah, quick comment. I, I just think, uh, you know, with our audience, that you have to look at the line also between investment and trading. So I think there's a lot of crypto investing where you believe in the fundamentals, you believe in the project and the team and all of that. And then there's trading to get in early and get out, you know, and, and make a quick profit. So I think evaluating a strategy of whether to, uh, you know, buy in early and get out or wait to see, you know, what happens in a month or two really depends. Are, are you looking to trade to make a profit in a short period of time or are you looking at a long-term investment? Uh, so, and... With my answer, I'll try to answer the earlier question too. Uh, I think um, there's a bit of par parallel with the early days of, of the internet where, uh, you know, and this will sort of uh, put an age in me, but uh, I was involved in, in startups from the first dot-com boom era. And so there's a lot of parallel with, with how back then anything with dot com at the end was able to raise tens and twenties and thirty millions of dollars and so I think that was a bit like last year with uh, anything that says ICO was able to raise with just a white paper and, and a uh, pretty deck uh, but with uh, more maturity coming to the market I think uh, what we will see in addition is that instead of uh, fundraising to build there will be more um, building and then fundraising after I have the product and the platform. So, so I think that will be a uh, staying trend this uh, f going forward. And uh, what, what I do want to say is that there's a, a lot of overthinking and overcalculating on, on the ICO process. And uh, as my uh, peers have uh, mentioned, you know, when you have a platform product that, that is is really, um, it, it works and is, is going to be uh, disruptive, you don't need to overthink and overcalculate how much you're going to raise in this ICO, how big the private sale, hard cap, soft cap, and so on. Because uh, the, the value of, of that platform or protocol or, or project will be captured in the, in the token itself. So to give you an example, Ethereum uh, raised, I think, in their ICO, quote-unquote ICO, pr a private sale, about $20 million. Uh, okay, uh, 17. Uh, I like to round up. Um, and uh, so, but then 
the Ethereum Foundation has, and you can correct me on this one too, about one to two billion dollars now in Ether. So if you look at that, uh, the 20 million, 17 million that they raised is meaningless. So um, if, if uh, project founders focus more on the long-term value of the token and project itself, then they will have more raised by the value captured in the token itself than in the you know, uh, amount of money raised in the early ICO. So I would say if you focus on the long term, then there's no need to overthink how the ICO is done. Very good. Thank you. So this is actually very good to lead to my next question. Right? So John, you mentioned about the built and raised idea. So now we may notice more and more, because in the past one year, all the projects are startup projects, right? Raise and build the product. But now we see more and more companies, established company, even list the company, right? For example, as we said, as we see earlier, Kodak, right? Uh, list the company is coming to this space and issuing a token. They are not startup company. So how do you see that? Is that like a, going to be the trend for the future? Or, or would that kind of token be better than the startup token? How should we see that? OK, uh, I'll take a stab at this. So at Hashed, we do a ton of reverse ICOs. Uh, in the beginning, it was uh, because it fit our investment thesis. It's, it's a rare opportunity for there to be a new asset class and Korea of all places to be sort of at the eye of the storm, right? Because we had transaction volumes and nothing else. Right? But for this ecosystem to actually work, we need to build developer ecosystems. We need to have local entrepreneurs actually build good projects. Right? So if you look at Korea as a market, there's only 50 million people. It's different than Japan, China, US. It's not Israel either, because Israel from the get-go, they have low local market, they go global. Right? Um, if you are a segment leader, you still have trouble raising a reputable size B, size C. You have to go overseas to SoftBank or Tencent anyways. So why not do a coin offering and try to go Pan-Asia? Why not dilute your ownership of a company all the way down to 0.5%, but still have a chance of achieving your dream, right? Um, and we thought it was our responsibility to get involved and try to help them out. Uh, but since then, and that was only like four months ago, uh, the projects that are reaching out to us, trying to do an ICO, perform a coin offering, are now like all unicorns. Uh, and I'm pretty sure in three months, we'll be in a whole different world, right? But the general trend we're seeing, and, and we have no idea where to value them either, Right? But you know, these, these founders run multi-billion dollar companies, right? So uh, there's going to be a wall of huge reverse ICOs with existing user base uh, that they can try to convert really fast. Either that's into an exchange or a wallet uh, or a decentralized ecosystem. On the other side, we're seeing a lot of tier one entrepreneurs coming in with really solid business plans, but they're raising more moderate rounds, just like your typical seed A, B, just with a little bit less friction. Uh, and we'll probably see that for three months and then you know, we'll be in a different world by then. Yeah, I agree uh, that the uh, reverse ICO is definitely going to be a big trend. And we hear so many like, like really top tech, tech companies are trying to do the reverse ICO. Uh, and like, I agree with Alex's point that they already have existing users and they have like, already like, strong teams of engineers and like, all the resources they can push for. But I also do actually see challenges because centralization and decentralization are very different things. And they have to give up many things. Like for example, Facebook. Um, I should not say whether they are doing um, 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 preparing something or not, but uh, if you are already doing really well, why you are giving up uh, that um, business or the revenue by being an uh, intermediary, right? And another thing is, like reverse ICO always come with the problem of how you're gonna divide the existing team uh, versus. Um, like uh, the new projects. Uh, but yes, we do uh, see as a reverse ICO a huge trend. And especially in Korea, there are many um, reverse, pro reverse ICO projects. Uh, but I think um, 
I almost believe the reverse I say the term actually came out of Korea, um, but I think it's also because Korea, it's also because of the situation of Korea. So if you think about 2014 and 2015, the government spent a lot of money to really facilitate the startup ecosystem. And now after three years or two or three years, these um, startup uh, got funds from the traditional VC they have to raise the next round. Um, and I'm not saying every project, but to be honest, some project coming out from Korea, they simply do the reverse ICO because they need money. And they pr probably cannot get the second round, uh, Series B and Series C, because to get Series B and Series C, you need to prove the, again, like the business model, users, and all other criteria to get the next round of funding. So um, while we see it's a trend, um, and it's a much easier way for a project to raise money, but going back to the fundament, fundamental, we have to ask why these projects are trying to do reverse ICO, why they think the blockchain can solve the problem that they are currently uh, trying to solve, and what's like the fundamental reason to do reverse ICO. I also would add that I agree with what the other said, that I think we're going to see a lot more reverse ICOs happen. I think a lot of businesses, in order to stay competitive in their respective industries, will need to shift to a blockchain, to a token economy. Uh, I think that the, um, this, this, this space as far as uh, investments, as, a, as an investor, those, those companies, those uh, reverse ICOs will be a safer investment uh, when you're dealing with a company that already has a proven business model, an existing user base, when you're looking at it from a perspective of investment, those are probably going to be much more popular with kind of conservative investors that have been um, a bit hesitant to enter kind of the ICO space. So um, the advantage of the reverse ICO is as uh, the uh, Mars and Alex and Sin, Sin, Sinhae mentioned, uh, the, they have already lots of users in the internal services and products already. So uh, the circulation of the economy can be uh, usually easily you know done. I think. And the second thing is that the company and co-founders can be uh, proven by the equity holders already. So uh, we can eliminate the scam issues uh, by using the reverse ICO in the perspective of the um, investors. Uh, and then one thing that I mentioned about the reverse ICO is that uh, the, uh, I define the reverse ICO as a corporation that turns into the foundation, leaving a foundation only. But the, most of the reverse ICO I've seen in the market is kind of the um, hybrid ICO, uh, which means that uh, the incorporations make another foundations and they uh, make some interactions between two entities. So which I, I call that the um, hybrid ICO. So I think uh, in that case, uh, that, that kind of the design imply both the, uh, the value of the incorporation and the foundation simultaneously. I think it has the, some kind of the settlement you know, the, between the foundation and the, the incorporations. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a little less optimistic about reverse ICOs. I mean, I would be um, of the view of investor beware, starting out with, is there really a need for um, an ICO, or is it that companies who've struggled to raise their C and D rounds are looking at maybe the best venture capital mechanism that's been around for the last 20 or 30 years, and they're looking to take advantage of it. Um, so I would go back to the comment I made before, is, are the fundamentals there? Does this bitter business improve by being on the blockchain? Does it improve by having token economics? And you really need to challenge uh, these companies as to whether the fact that they're going to do an ICO, is it improving their product and service, or is it just an easy way to raise money? Very good, thank you. So um, recently, I'm sure we all a little frustrated with the markets. Uh, fluctuation. Um, so I would like to hear, because we now almost uh, um, end of the time, so I'd like to hear from all the speakers, what do you see of the near future of the market trend 
and movement and share some insight whether we should wait more before we get in or we should if we have more we should sell now or what should we do like i mean that's a very hard question to answer. Again, like I'm not like the professional trader. Uh, I do um, blockchain investing because I fundamentally believe in the technology in the long term. So for me, like short-term trading advice, very hard to give. Uh, but we actually do see a lot of the liquidity problem uh, at this moment, uh, and um, especially the liquidity, organic liquidity, um, has been like dying up especially for uh, small market cap coins. And unfortunately, I do not think it's going to be fundamentally changed for uh, near short term, means like by the end of the year, because I don't see the like, fundamental breakthrough uh, will actually come out uh, in the short term. Um, let, let, me, let, me, <laughs> like, th let me throw in some flavor here. So I'm not sure if this is correct, but... Uh, and we're, we're very optimistic at, at Hashed, but we're also very idealists. You know, we genuinely believe people will one day work for protocols and not companies. And our understanding of 9 to 5, Monday to Friday could totally change, right? Like data interoperability in healthcare, I just can't see a world where that doesn't happen. Now, does it happen in five years or 50 years? I hope five, right? Uh, so in that sense, uh, we're, we're hopeful that the market will find its ground in, in due term. Uh, what's really kind of crazy in my mind is we're going to start see we'll, we'll see like a graveyard of dead projects, but with a ton of capital still in their banks. So what what what, what does that mean? Are we going to start seeing some mergers there? Are we going to start seeing some weird acquisition structures? What does that mean for token holders or equity holders? If right, so I feel like that's going to come down in the next few months, right, at the very least. So uh, from a market standpoint, like I think the retail market is kind of in a lull right now. Um, I'm hoping that we don't go back to the dark ages, right, where Bitcoin stays at 200 for four years. But at this stage, judging by what I've seen from institutional investors, judging by what I've seen from the wall of family money that wants to get into the industry, uh, we're cautiously optimistic that there will be an upswing. But maybe it won't be all in the retail space. I would yeah, agree. I agree. I th sorry. I, would just say, I think we're on the precipice of a lot of regulation coming into the industry. And I think as that regulation comes in, it will allow a lot of institutional money to be able to come in. And I think then we will see... Um, prices return to all-time highs, even if it's artificially or if it's temporary. So as an investor, I think you have to be very aware of the conversations about regulation and the kind of turf war over who will regulate uh, the different securities in, in, in crypto, and, and that will be a big uh, influence into the price in the coming months, year, year and a half. Like, actually, I believe this downturn is really good <laughs> to... Uh, really um, facilitated the growth of this entire ecosystem because even last year uh, money was really cheap um, you can easily raise like 10 like 20 like 30 million or even larger amounts it's so easily and then um, just again like money was really cheap but because of this downturn we'll see uh, only really good uh, funds will survive because of the liquidity problem. And because of that, only good projects will also survive. And it's gonna be same thing. And then because only good projects will survive, it's actually good for um, retail investors as well. So, um, I mean, again, like I do all agree that the market, in, when I mentioned it's like short term, it's like by the end of the year, uh, we will definitely see the market is gonna go up with the more institutional fund coming. Um, but we have to go through this downturn to really see what's real and what's not real. I think this is the, the classic uh, panel question that always happens. What's the price of Bitcoin going to be in the future? And uh, I usually give the disclaimer that I don't give investment advice. But if you give me five Ether, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> all, all kidding aside. Um, what I think will be interesting in the balance of 2018 is whether we see a correlation break between Bitcoin and all the other um, cryptocurrencies that are out there. And I think the correlation break where pretty much everything tracks to the price of Bitcoin today, if we see something break out um, on its own independent track, I think that that possibly will signal um, that something new has been built and something new is being recognized by the market. So I think that's uh, something I'm looking out for is that correlation break. Uh, the other thing that uh, that I think is interesting is will we start seeing companies that develop and bring products to the markets which start creating their own independent value? And I think that'll, um, that'll start showing products that get their own value set. Wait, so one, one thing I'm hopeful for is, and this might be just my personal only hope, 
is like at, when Bitcoin hit, like dips below 6,000, that's when a lot of miners start losing money, right? And then it goes, when it goes below three, that's when everybody starts losing money, right? <laughs> that, could, that, could, that could be mayhem. So I, I'm hopeful that there's some powerful people behind that's not gonna let that happen, let's hope, right? And if you look at actually OTC trading volume, they've gone up considerably. So the volumes are still there, they're just not on Binance or Upit or something like that. They're just being done at a you know, one-to-one -one type basis if yet. So maybe, maybe some of that will trickle back when the regulatory environment does clear up. Uh, in my opinion, uh, one uh, problems of the blockchain so far is that uh, that's all intangible right now. So uh, uh, the, the the platform coins we mentioned, such as the ADA, Quantum Nail, the Icon, the representative, you know, the uh, platform coins in South Korea, is intangible to the uh, novice users. So I think uh, we have uh, many opportunity to get more and more. Uh, tangible applications working on that and then the novice users and the typical users in the physical world might understand the the value of the blockchain so i think uh, in that perspective the 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 market goes up you know so that's the why i uh, see as a you know market as a prospect uh, the positive way john do you have anything uh, i i think everybody said a lot of things that i wanted to say so well, we, we actually have time for one more question, so I'm going to um, ask one more. Um, so now the market is down, right? And uh, we see many um, obstacles, uh, you know, positive view from the panel that it will become good again. So now if, if the market is down, then maybe a good buying opportunity, right? So if we forget about ICO going to the secondary market, right, on the exchange, now many corn are down. So what will be a good suggestion to go in and select? Is it just because maybe um, a particular coin dropped 50% or 80%, will that be cheap? Or some that just dropped 10%, right? So how do you, any suggestion how to go into the secondary exchange market to, to pick an existing coin? I don't manage a fund, so I can probably speak freely. I know everybody managing a fund yeah, up here like, is uh, shaking and saying I can't answer that question. The most sensitive questions in history. Um, you know, for, for us, we, 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 just, we just hold long for, for most things. I'll give you an example. We were early EOS investors, because uh, back then they were promised to be, you know, the, the Ethereum killer. Uh, so we, we held EOS from $7 down to $0.50, cents, up to $24, down to 16 now down to, I think, 6 and a half or something. Uh, we didn't buy any. We didn't sell any more. <laughs> Right. We just got to ride it out. Um, for, for us, uh, our, you know, we're very transparent at Hashed. Our, our entire portfolio is on our website. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that they're the best investments because a lot of decisions, decisions we made were more on impact investments, right? But in general, like me personally, if I was managing my own wealth, I would stay away from the really crazy alts. Uh, I'd, I'd look at the top 10, 20 and find out who's actually building, right? It's pretty easy to tell who's actually building these days. Yeah, and I, I think there's... Um Again, I hate to say one, one uh, token, but I think EOS is an interesting case in that they're specifically deploying approximately a billion dollars of capital into projects that'll be built on top of it. And so I think there's this direct tangible value that the capital that they've raised is going to contribute to growth in the ecosystem by implementing capital specifically on their chain. If someone drops an ERC-20 token on Ethereum, it's intangible value to an Ethereum holder. But EOS's model is encouraging building on top of the platform, and I think when you deploy capital that way, um, it should, it could turn out to be a good story. I mean, right now, like the value of projects or tokens um, is all relative basis compared to other projects in the same category. It's not based on their inherent value, which is like, for example, NPV and etc. So. Again, like it's a, such a like tricky question to give, and I don't think I'm, I should be uh, the one who is giving the advice. But I will just look at like very technical things, like hey, what's like the, um, like fundamentally what problem they're trying to solve, and what was their um, the ICO price, and what where we are right now, and then also like token like supply and circulations uh, and other metrics that you usually do, uh, usually look at uh, from the investing perspective. 
Actually, CoinMarketCap gets, gets the supply wrong all the time. Uh, so that valuation you see on CoinMarketCap isn't necessarily accurate. There are coins that are trading at 800, but really they're like 9 billion. Yeah, right? and OTC so, is used yeah. too, right? Our, our general thesis at Hashed is all these modeling about token valuations, it's way too early to tell, right? And any given day, we just you know, pull a list of top 100 from CoinMarketCap and do we have enough coins in that portfolio that looks like we've been doing good in our jobs, right? And we, we're, we're cautiously optimistic that the market will kind of figure it out itself as, as it goes. Anyone? Okay. So, um, okay, so I will also share some of my personal view. Um, so I think, because um, we all know um, the Ethereum future is coming out. So I think that will be something interesting to watch. Um, it might have some impact as we all know the Bitcoin future came out. But on the other hand, I'm not pessimistic like, because I think that will just take the uncertainty away from the market. Um, I agree with um, Alex that a lot of OTC uh, transactions is happening. Those are big trader, like the bank, even the pension fund, they're buying, they're not going to exchange and they're buying like tens and tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin off the exchange. So a lot of the big boys are accumulating now. Um, so I don't know when it will go up, but I'm in general also positive of, as well, I think. Um, okay, any more comments uh, from the panels? All right, then uh, thank you very much, everybody. So I hope uh, you also get some insights uh, from this panel to take away with you today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.